station. For some reason, I have your preliminary approval, and it says the applicant will have to request a waiver from Section 4250 of the Subdivision Rules and Regulations, which is road length and move lot lines on lot five to meet the requirement for the definition of lot area from the town of Dighton zoning bylaws. So this board, at that time of your approval for the preliminary, um, addressed lot number five as a- But that issue, that issue was never brought up at a meeting. That was a condition. I, I'd like to get my hands on the minutes because I remember Absolutely. specifically talking about that. And, and getting the opinion from Jim Aguiar on that. I will, I will get you the minutes to me. Sure. And, um, <laughs> but I. I know I wasn't there. I don't think I didn't remember it. I'm not there that night. Joe Brady Peter. Okay. Um, I will get you the minutes to the meeting, but I yeah. mean, if it's part of the. No, I, I, know, I know we spoke about it. And believe me, I wouldn't come in with, with a plan showing it the way I have it if. If in fact that were the case and there was no opinion, well, Jeff, just for the record, it's, it, it says six lot, six proposed lots too. So one being one, uh, uh, one being a drainage, one lot having an existing dwelling. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Right. I will get you the minutes, but I. I decision. And, and again, that boils down to. Okay, can. I think when you get into lot design, it's it's a zoning issue. Which well, I don't I don't disagree with you. Right. But I think you're looking approval for a subdivision here. This, that falls under this board. Yeah, Jim's not going to approve for a subdivision where we are. Which no, but if, if, the, if the lot comfortable if the lot doesn't conform, if it's a non-conforming lot, you can't get a building permit on it anyways. Is, is my point. Um, you know that's why like when you when you sign plans, form A plans, that your the board isn't certifying that the lot conforms to zoning. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why you have that in there. Um, same thing applies to the well, I can remember, I was on the board when we wrote that bylaw, and that was the reason why we wrote that bylaw, was to a T. Just so, so we'll, check with, our, we'll check with the yeah. legal counsel. And we'll but we will. Them. But I think also you have to understand that the board is looking, they want their subdivisions to be nice subdivisions, not subdivisions that have weird lots that end up with problems with neighbors and, <coughs> and you know, not providing the area that people expect in lots. It's, it's more than just a, a zoning uh, requirement. Yeah, and, and I mean, obviously that's the intent when I design it, you know, whether or not it's the intent of the applicant, who knows, but um, I think, the, you know, you look at the subdivision, if it's built according to the way it's designed, it's going to be a nice subdivision. Um, yeah, some of the lot lines you know, uh, your traditional style, I would agree, but it's my opinion that they can form the zone. But, well, you know, you, we'll it's kind of funny, I remember that I was on a planning board at the time, but what you've come up with there is where does it begin and end as far as people creating more pork, pork chop lots? Because that's a perfect example of what happened on Pine Street long time ago. This is why they eliminated pork chop lots because you have one house behind the other. And you know, the, it's just what happened. So uh, that was the purpose of creating that bylaw so we wouldn't see stuff like this anymore. But anyway, we'll get a check. Sure. The ZBA also has been very adamant about pork chop lots. People asking for variances you know, people that lived in town and owned land for years that own pork chop lots that can't develop them. So, you know, for them to look at that, say it's okay for them and it's not okay for them, that's not right. They didn't look at this one. ZBA did not look at no. this one. No. Yeah, but he's saying it's right. the owners of the other people. Yeah. Of the other well, all I can tell you is what we did at the preliminary stages and what we, you know, before we even come to the planning board, we got a determination on, on this issue with the radius here and also on lot five. And, and Jim um, agreed with our opinion that they were conform lots. You know, obviously I would have, if, if Jim would have come up with the opinion it wasn't, it would, there would have been changes on the, on the definitive. But, I mean, we're not gonna resolve that tonight. You'll, you know, 
still don't understand why he's actually saying something. Well, I mean, he's, uh, he's, he's it's, different from the planning board. It's his opinion that he reads that. I mean, it is a little vague. I'm not going to lie. But, like I said, I was on the board when that when that bylaw was created, and we created it just for that, for this purpose. And well, I think you also have to look at the point that Mr. Aguilar is just looking at it strictly He's in the eyes and bolts. of yeah. the zoning. Right, right. The planning board is looking at this as density of development, yep. potential impacts to the abutters, and other things. It's a whole package. Right, right. And like I said, I wasn't here at the at the at the, uh, the preliminary floor. I would have signed it, so and I would have brought it up that night. So be it. So are you ready to continue it? So Jeff, we, we start our summer schedule in June. My June meeting is full, so I gotta put you in July. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, absolutely, I do, absolutely. Bob Barabee, Ken Barabee, my brother, who's the butter for the law. He's the one who hired the attorney to put the comments together who couldn't be here today. But just to make it short and sweet, we obviously look at things differently as far as street layouts go. But the layout of Sharp's Lot Road is a straight road. The frontage, according with the planning board, the zoning board regulations, is based on a street. When you define the layout of a street, it doesn't come down, it's not gonna be changed to come down Sharps Lot Road, turn up Wilson Way, come across, go back out to Sharps Lot Road. Sharps Lot Road layout, which is defined, will remain what it is. The legal description of Wilson's Way will come down across these turning radiuses to Sharps Lot Road and then go back to the legal layout of Wilson Way will touch the existing layout of Shops Lot Road. That's why the attorney Caloran says that the legal frontage is 233.54 feet, which is non-conforming. Whether the board chooses to use half a circle, they can do that, but the state doesn't allow that, and the regulations from the town only allow you to use the intersecting street if it's more than 120 degrees, which this clearly isn't. That's why the attorney came to that conclusion. With regard to lot five being a pork chop lot, he came to this, he had, he had the same feeling as the town has, the planning board has. If you look at this, the lot, the handle, 160 feet of it, is in what he called the handle of the pork chop lot and only 90 feet of the frontage remains in the area where the lot is being built. Now you can definitely put a 100 by 100 foot box on this lot with no problem. But I could come in based on what is being said today and put a lot in that has 249 feet of frontage one foot of frontage here, I could come up with a lot here, bulb it out, put a 100 by 100 foot square in, come back, and you're telling me that that would be not a fork chop lot, that would be a conforming lot. Most towns that deal with lots, because everybody has a different opinion on what's a pork chop, a rat tail, a ham head, whatever it wants to be called, it's all subject to interpretation. So what most towns have done is put these boxes in, but the stipulation is, is that the box has to touch the frontage of the street that the lot is being created from. Some towns also use circles, and the circle has to touch the frontage, and it can't touch the sidelines of the lot. To get even more of a definitive answer, most towns now are going to shape factors, where they take the area of the lot, the perimeter of the lot, and they take 16 times the area of the lot divided by the perimeter squared of the lot, and if it's lower than a 0 .4 value, then that <laughs> lot is, becomes irregular. <laughs> but that's what they do. I was that, doing that. That <laughs> takes away. <laughs> you do that again. <laughs> wow, wow. It takes away like 
But I think it's a pork chop. I think it's a ham and ham. I think it's something else. You know? so that's what. That's how they define this now. And uh, so that's just to re uh, the two comments that were made on the frontage and on the pork chop lot. The drainage thing, whether you call it a swale, just some people call it water quality square swales, it still has to do with the drainage. It's not just a ditch running along the side of the property. It's used to, to clean up the water that's coming down from the road and also from the lawn. So his concerns are oils and things from the street and fertilizers and things from the land, the lawn that are obviously going to put in put in here, it's all going to end up coming down to the bottom. The well is right here. It should be shown on the plans. It's 23 feet from the property. It was there when he bought the house. This piece of property, was this house was owned by Shalel, who owned the people in the world. Yeah, so it was all, and that well was there. It wasn't put in to get too close to this. It was put in here because his septic system is over here. He has to stay 100 feet from his septic system, so that's where the well is. And that's what his concern is, that if anything goes into the groundwater, fertilizers, oils, it could potentially cause harm to the ground. So that was it. I think one of the big issue, or the biggest issue, is about an hour and 40 minutes ago, I met with Aggie. I also feel that this preliminary plan thing, from a state statute, your butters are supposed to be notified. Whether the town doesn't do that or not, that's up to the town. The state does require it. They were never notified, and that's why Caloran made the statement that had they been notified and knew of the meeting, the same question would have been brought up and the same concerns would have been brought up. But because they didn't know about the meeting, they didn't come to me. We just found out after the fact that a preliminary plan was submitted. I talked to Jim Aguiar about an hour, and maybe about 20 minutes or six. He told me, and he says, I can make this statement at this meeting because he had to leave. He says, this lot is not buildable, which is totally opposite of what the board was told. And he says, lot five is not buildable. So the planning board can create them through the subdivision, but he will not issue building permits on either one of those lots. So that's, you can call Jim, you can see him tomorrow or whatever, but he's telling me exactly the opposite of what he's telling me. So I think that uh, whether it's the town, the town attorney, or the courts, I think you things should be addressed for the benefit of Wilson and for his engineer and no, proceed. So that's the way it's going to go. But I think that's it. So I'll give you that equation, that mathematical yeah, equation. Yeah. I'm good. Sure. I'm good. I got it all recorded. I Heidi, <laughs> can you know, work confirm you with Jim? I absolutely will. I just, Thanks. Yep. Thanks. Heidi, there was a certified abutters list submitted with the preliminary? There was. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if you can get, yeah, if you can get the green card then for that, because she was not notified. I didn't. I wouldn't notify. I. I have never notified. So did your company notify them? No. It was part of the requirement of that we submit a certified abutters list. But how do you submit? She doesn't. So you have a list, but nobody actually mailed anything out. That, I don't know. It's not, if you read the regulations, it's not up to the applicant to notify. Well, who's, who's, who is? Me. Tom? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just saying for the record that he was never notified. Defendant may have been always no. notified, but right. never notified for preliminary. Okay. I look, I've looked at that, I've looked into it, maybe all these years I've done it wrong. And okay. Bob knows he's never. Other comments, questions? Does anyone like to make a motion? We have a date yet? Yeah, wait, I'm sorry. Um, for July, is 
is our next available meeting date. Okay. July what? Well, okay. My next question to the board. I know you have Twelfth, vacation. I'm not going to be here. Anybody else have vacation? Um, I'm also taking my vacation the 12th of July to coincide. Anybody else? No. We're all good. Where are we? We don't want to do the fifth, right? No. <laughs> How about July nineteenth? Sure. At six p.m. Okay. Okay. I will make a motion to continue this public hearing <coughs> from Wilson's Way to July nineteenth, twenty seventeen, at six p.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you all very much. And email address for the for the plans. Okay. You'd like to send the plans. Perfect. You have PDFs, right? I I will, Jeff will send them to me. Okay. Okay. Your frontage says, you know, it's along the street. It doesn't say legal right away. Yeah. And it's yeah. like two intersecting two intersecting streets. Where does each frontage end? Do you want um to give it to you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, for the sheet. Well, that's what they were saying. Can you divide it? Can you divide it? Because if, if it doesn't belong to one, it doesn't belong to the other. There's really too many to add. Yeah. 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 Thank you, sir. Yeah, and I will thank you. I will send you. How you doing? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you know about it. Good, good. Right, right. Yeah, you have to call the city. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. That's going to be the judge. Apologize for the time. How you doing? How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. So I will be in contact with people and meet you out there, okay? Or it might be before. Heidi, can I just I'm probably not going to stay around for this. That's um, okay. But I did want to mention that you did see the, my suggestions to the decision on Council Oaks 2. I absolutely did. Okay, if the board has anybody any questions on that? I did not. I read through them and I did not. I just haven't had time to edit it yet. Okay, because I was concerned that you know, we have a drainage problem on that subdivision if we don't have some requirements there so that they address the, the comments fully that I had. Put in my last review mm -hmm. on that one. Which okay. that we will that is the decision for both Okay. Alright. Thank mm -hmm. you. Peter, all those plans. Those are stuff we borrowed and you asked for Montero. Oh, oh, so you did oh, I was like, I'm totally being the No, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Green green shirt. Yeah. I thought I drifted I it's a
So we'll uh, table the uh, Form A plan until the end. Yes. And our next uh, item on the agenda is a pre presentation from Green Harbor about a dispensary. So, take it away. Take it away. Hi. Well, thank you everybody for uh, inviting us in tonight. Uh, I'm Bob Shibby. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the Green Harbor. I'm joined by um, Mike Patel, who's our CFO, and Robert Karp, who is our Chief Operating Officer. Um, this is kind of a typical format for us. We meet with several town departments as we go through, or town committees and groups as we go through our process. What, what we are looking for is we are looking to um, put a dispensary and possibly a cultivation site within your town. Um, one of the things that is important for us to do is to understand your process so that we can, you know, support the process. Um, and before I get into the actual deck, and just for you guys to think about as we go through this, is that um, the, way, the way DPH currently <laughs> works and where we are currently in the process is that you have an initial application, application intent, where you have to go through Corey background checks, your team, your investors, whatever. That then moves to a management operations profile, 45 essay questions, 45 to 50, long form essay questions that you have to come, you know, answer meticulously. There's a lot of questions and answers back and forth. The process took us like nine months to get through. And then the final phase is the citing profile. And that's the phase that we're in right now. Citing profile means that you have to um, get a letter of approval or non-opposition from the town that you're thinking of either placing a dispensary or a cultivation facility or both. So you got to get a letter of approval or non-opposition from the town. Um, that combined with um, an artist's rendering of your locations, a five-year discounted cash flow analysis of your dispensary and cultivation site. Um, I believe there's a couple of other pieces of information we need to complete the application. That application then gets submitted to DPH, assuming that they come in and validate did they really get a letter from the town of Dighton? Did they really have a, a, an expressed interest in this property? Is that really that artist rendering true to form? Does that discount of cash flow make sense? And then once they review all that and validate all that, what they do is they issue a, um, a letter of pre-registration. So in my terms, that's a license However, it's a license that really enables me to start the process, the real process. This has all been paperwork up till now. But that once we have a letter of uh, you know, a, a, a pre-registration license, <coughs> it then permits us to um, execute against those letters of interest for properties, start the special permitting process within a town, secure the permits, get the architects, engineers, documents in order, design, et cetera. Um, and, we, and we then, you know, kind of move through the process. Um, probably can take anywhere from, uh, after we get the, the letter of pre-registration, uh, on a very aggressive side, six months to get a letter to open or sell or grow, depending on whether it's cultivation or dispensary, and it could take upwards of a year and a half to two years to open, just depends on the, the process and how well the buildings were that you selected, et cetera, where they are, can they be renovated, is the total, you know, build out, is it building it from the ground up. So that, that's kind of the, the process in short, and what we were hoping to do today is tell you a little bit about Green Harbor, um, but also to understand more specifically what the process is here in town. Um, with hopes that we can secure in the not so distant future, I believe we have a public forum on June 7th, is that, is that the date? There'll be a public forum on June 7th where the town will you know, hear more from us and, and decide about moving forward. But what, what we need to do to plug into your process, assuming that we are successful to move forward. Go ahead. I, I, don't, I don't believe we have a public forum forward with the process I suggested to Vicki that you submit your special permit application 
and if you were to get that in, we could hold your first public hearing on June 7th. Well, this is where we need to understand the process, because okay. I'm confused about what, it, what a special permit means. I mean, my understanding is you want design and engineering, site diagrams, okay. and things like did, that. Did she give you the um, zoning bylaw things I gave her as far as the special permit process and everything? I, I, I don't have them in my possession. Okay. If she did, maybe she did. Instead of my, my suggestion to you is see this book. Mm -hmm. This would be very good, useful to you. Yeah. It has the medical overlay. Um, special permit process in there. Mm -hmm. The special permit 4600, which is section 4600. The medical overlay district is section 4800. Okay. Those two things would be very important. First, read, read section 4800, and it explains to you about the medical overlay district and your dispensary, where which our district is only at, at Princess House. Um, and it tells you that you need to uh, <coughs> seek a special permit from the planning board. Then you go to 4600 of our zoning bylaws, which is the requirements for a special permit. Gives you step by step in how you would submit your application to the board for a special permit for a dispensary in a medical overlay district. Um, it's pr it's it, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's not a it's not very intense. Um, so that is the process you will go to for your dispensary if you at Princess House, because obviously that's the only place you can have a dispensary is at Princess House in our town. As far as if you were going to um, grow and you were going to go to Spring Street and grow, that would be considered as a uh, light manufacturing and you would only have to have a uh, site plan review from this board for that, for that process. Very simple. That also is, is outlined in our zoning bylaws. But I guess question, I, and I really appreciate it because that's mm -hmm. valuable. I'm hoping we get that far. Mm -hmm. But my question is, what do I require to get a letter of approval or not opposition from the town? Do you need one from this board? We, we need one from the town. So you need one from the Board of Selectmen. Yeah, imagine that the Board of Selectmen, I mean, there's a standard format that EPH, because it's like if you don't want us, we'll never get the letter, so which, therefore we can Which can't. is understandable. Yeah. So I think you should finish your presentation, and then my suggestion would be if you would ask the Board that if maybe they would write a letter of recommendation to the Board of Selectmen okay. to write you a letter of recommendation, that would be great. they could give their recommendation to the Board of Selectmen, okay. and that, that would be my suggestion. That makes sense. If they choose another site for the dispensary, they, now, they cannot choose it. They can, can, can they come before the zoning board and get another matter of overlay? Well, that that that's a really that's a big process. Yeah, so I know you, it is. If you would choose another site in town where we would have to um, rezone, rezone yeah. that would be depending on where your site is. That would be up to this board. Mm -hmm. um, we chose Princess House for a lot of different reasons. There's no neighbors around. It's, it's it pretty much very industrial. We wouldn't, you know, we're a very rural town. So to find another site without there being neighbors, um, I think that this board did their due diligence at the time and looked through that and mm -hmm. looked to see if there was other sites. And the only site that we did come up with was Princess House. But if you find another site, you're more than welcome to bring it to the board and see how they feel about it. That'd be great. Now bear in mind, We've already brought this to town meeting and the townspeople of